So we're going to talk about non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, also referred to as BiPAP commonly. And so as far as the indications on the board exam, the most common is to simply prevent invasive ventilation or intubation, we'll call it. Okay, lots of bad things happen when we invasively intubate a patient and ventilate them and that includes things like ventilator associated pneumonias also we can damage the alveoli or cause barotrauma so anytime we can ventilate a patient using a mask uh, that's a much safer way to to accomplish that now keep in mind the pH if if they do have a respiratory acidosis the pH should be at least 7.26. If it's below that, then we really should start considering invasive ventilation. Okay, so another good indication for NPPV is for a patient, patient who has a DNR, do not resuscitate, or a do not intubate order. And so NPPV will allow us to respect their wishes while also supporting their breathing. Okay, and so a third indication would be patients with neuromuscular impairments. Okay, and this category can include things like ALS, um, myasthenia gravis, or Julian Barre syndrome, or even patients with uh, stroke, such as uh, cerebrovascular accidents. Okay. So those are all good indications to use non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. Let's talk uh, briefly about the initial settings you want to set up the patient on. And so we're going to have to choose an IPAP, an inspiratory positive airway pressure. And a good starting point on the board exam would be 12. And then we have to select an expiratory positive airway pressure and we want to start around 5. Okay, you have to do an, select an I time. All right, and one second generally is a good starting point. But keep in mind, you can use 0 0.8 seconds or even 1.2 seconds. It's not an absolute. And so you're also gonna have to choose a rate. And we're gonna stick to the same rate that we're using for mechanical ventilation. And we'll just use between 10 and 20 breaths per minute. And finally, you're gonna have to pick an FiO2 and generally between 30 and 60 is acceptable, an acceptable starting point as a general guideline. That's not an absolute criteria, okay? And so you wanna consider also if they have COPD, you wanna use the lowest FiO2 possible, that, that at least is acceptable for the patient. And also if they need more than 60% FiO2, that may be a sign that they're in, in hypoxemic respiratory failure and, and they may do better on invasive mechanical ventilation. Okay, so let's talk about the precautions to, to think about when we're choosing mechanical or NPPV. Okay, and one of the most important things I want you to think about is that the patient has to be able to protect their airway. Okay, this is vitally important. And so the patient should not be uh, obtunded, okay, or disoriented, because if they are, they're at risk of uh, aspirating and getting into much more trouble. All right. So, also you want to definitely not use a BiPAP mask on a patient with burns to the face or any type of uh, facial trauma okay or head trauma 